going to persist in throwing your cigars in the waste basket, would you have the kindness to extinguish them first? Barchi Burkhardt. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Chief. <laughs> no, no, no. It was just a little accident. No, pay no attention. <laughs> no, right. Well, you have a nice day, too. Oh, and give my regards to Mildred. All right, goodbye. What's for dinner, Rashi? Baked Alaska, baked trout, and if you don't stop smoking, baked me. You see, when the colonel went to drive his automobile out of the garage that night, the ignition key turned on by remote control. He could not turn it off. At that same moment, the garage doors closed swiftly, and it was not an accident, a simple asphyxiation. It was murder. End of chapter 29. Oh, by the way, Edith, in the Gazette Sunday, there was a 35 cent coupon for Sanka. Be sure to cut it out. Those robbers at Safeway are getting 3.90 a pound for it. Where was I? Oh, oh, yeah. It was murder. There was a sharp, audible gasp as Gabrielle's eyes swept the room. Swept. What is this sweeping the room? Um, her eyes fastened on Maxwell. Fastened? Oh, my God. Narrowed on, held, pinned. Oh, Christ, maybe I should retire. Um, Gabrielle's eyes, I'll clean that up later. Her eyes fastened on Maxwell. You, monsieur, are the only one with sufficient electronic experience to have perpetrated this sinister chain of events. You, Mr. Maxwell, operated this ingenious plan by remote control. Edith, I wonder if this goddamn thing works. Rashi? Yes, madame. Would you come in here a moment, please? I'm involved with a salad niçoise. Well, that can wait. As you wish, madame. Mm -hmm. Ah. 
I want you to wash the rolls before you pick up Doc from the airport. If I don't proceed now, there'll be no dinner. Will you for once do what I ask? With your most gracious permission, madame, you are, at times, impossible. perfectly. Congratulations, Rashi. It all works. The blocked ignition, the car doors, the fumes filling up the garage. You always said you were a genius, and you were absolutely right. You are proceeding too far. I'm not your guinea pig. One day, I'll kill you, and then I'll resign. And break your parole? I was safer back in the penitentiary. Oh, oh, Rashi, how would you like a nice 450 computer with hardware and software to match? Huh? I'm very angry! Or a Betamax with 20 of your favorite films? Casablanca? Wouldn't you like that, Rashi? I would also like to live to enjoy it. Be reasonable. These things have to be tested. I mean, accuracy is the trademark of every Anne Royce McLean novel. All 68 of them. Not a single phony device. <laughs> oh, my God, it's 4 o'clock. Quick, you got to go to the airport and pick up Doc. Get out the rolls. Madame. Trust me. Shall I return? Paragraph. The sharp jangle of the telephone awakened Madeline LeBeau as she got out of bed feeling a little hungover. She'd had a dreadful night. Good afternoon, Doctor. Afternoon. May I? I hope you had a pleasant flight. Oh, very fine. Very good. That'll be far too bad. Give that to me. Give that to me. Yeah. Madam Anne Royce McLean's residence? Oh, yes. Yes, Your Excellency. This is Rashi. No, no. It was an unfortunate false alarm. No, no. Thank you, sir. Alas, I could tell the good fire chief did not believe me. Well, what's all this, sir? Mighty well, it's a stuff here. <laughs> oh, Madame has become increasingly security conscious since some person or persons unknown attempted to purline one of Madame's sampling of her incalculable collection. And Madame, 
How is she? I would say about a bottle a day, sir. <laughs> it's cheaper by the gallon. <laughs> oh, oh, my darling. Oh, oh, wonderful. Oh. Good to see you. <laughs> How are things on the Faubourg Saint Honoré? <laughs> Why, there particularly? Well, you were there this morning, I can tell, buying Guerlain for that Parisian tart of yours. <laughs> Listen, Mrs. Perry Mason, one day you're going to be the piece de resistance at your own barbecue. Oh, come and sit down. You don't give a darn about me. It's that Brock I promised you. Not at all. Everything in this house should be in a fireproof museum. Well, the modern's been after me, but no dice. When I shuffle off to Buffalo, everything will be auctioned off at Sotheby's. And when the when the bidding goes over 20 million, I'll be up there looking down at you as you and the family split the bundle. But until then, I want you all catering to my every whim and dancing in a tent. I'm doing my daily fandango. <laughs> oh, not you, Doc. <laughs> you just keep looking after your arthritic old buddy. Isn't it awful to grow old? Well, not when you consider the alternative. But, dearest, you will never grow old. You'll always be the same spoiled brat you were. <laughs> Then, oh, then. When Paris was Paris and there was no McDonald's on the Charles Elysees. Oh, darling, <laughs> Paris is only Paris when you're young and carefree, and in your case, beautiful. <laughs> Wasn't I something? <laughs> Matisse really caught me. I loathed it at the time, but now I can see what he meant. Yes, what you see, my acquisitive darling, is a million dollars hanging on that wall, which you got for free. No, not exactly. <laughs> you mean Matisse? You didn't. Oh, I can only say that Madame Matisse never once asked me back for tea. Oh, well, that figures. <laughs> I believe it's my move. Oh. Have uh, you still got this board set up? It's half to half. It's six weeks. Oh, somebody appears to have moved my bishop to bishop four. Um, well, as far as I can recollect, I think it always was on bishop four, darling. Who would believe a fellow of the College of Surgeons would stoop so low as to cheat a 70-year-old woman? 65. 64. Let's have a drink. Don't you know that brandy is lethal combined with approaching senility? Besides, my love, I was only, uh, I was only testing your memory, you know? All right, my retired pill pusher. Try this. <laughs> bishop to knight five, it exchanges the bishop for the knight, gives white double pawns, knight to queen five, knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, knight to queen five, knight takes knight. Now, how's that for approaching senility? You are unbelievable, you'll outlive us all. Well, I certainly hope so. Madame, time for your medicine. Good boy, oh, Raji. Courvoisier and cortisone, an unbeatable combination. Alcohol and sclerosis confuse the brain. You know, that's why you go in and out of focus sometimes. Nonsense. I've never gone out of focus. Oh, I seem to remember several times in the last year when you've done a little walkabout. I don't know why I've kept you around all these years. I'm cheaper than Blue Cross. Pamela. Yes, Granny? Would you come into my study, darling? I've got a surprise for you. Really, Granny? I'll be right in. How is my darling little girl? Oh, about the same, but she seems happy, and I love having her here with me. Oh, Doc, while you were away, I heard about this fantastic man in Switzerland who has had the most things. Oh, Annie, when are you going to face up to facts? You know perfectly well that in her case, a brain damage is... I know, it's... I know, but there's always hope. Huh? Who would believe it was 10 years since Chet and Molly were killed and poor little Pamela? <laughs> no one could have been a better mother to her than you. Thank you, dearest. Oh, Doc, I've got big news. The Mystery Riders of America have awarded me an Edgar for the case of the purple shoes. Oh, darling, how marvelous! Congratulations! How about that? Uh, Edgar Allan Poe and me. A case of the purple shoes. Not one of your best efforts. I never thought I'd never even like the cover. Oh, stick to your stethoscope. Oh, no, but darling, it really was a bit flimsy. That purple shoe business would never convince a jury. Well, it convinced 310,000 in hardcover and 765,000 in paperback. Yeah. 
desperate, lonely souls in airport lounges. Granny, oh, for heaven's sakes, Pamela. Well, look who's here. It's Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> oh. I found a whole tree full of costumes in my playhouse. Your mommy used to play with those when she was a little girl. Pamela. Why weren't you at my party yesterday? Well, darling, I was in Paris. Don't you remember? But still, I was thinking of you all the time. Mm. Well, there's a first time for everything. That's the first time I've ever kissed a girl with a moustache. Oh, aren't you forgetting what's her name? Oh, Granny, I found my old bike in the playhouse. But the chain is, is all rusty and I can't ride it. Oh, take it down to Joe Murphy at the garage and have him grease it for you. Thank you, Granny. Mm. See you later, Uncle Doc. Bye, darling. Take care, darling. Where's Mark? He comes up weekends. How's the marriage? Oh, who knows? I, she seems to love him, and I suppose he loves her. I think we should dress for dinner. Yes. yes. What time is it to be? Eight o'clock, and don't be late. There's a beauty on the late show, the creature that came in from the swamp. Oh, darling, do we have to? Our house rules. Oh. <laughs> Are these all right, madame? Oh, fine. Put them there. <sighs> Matisse. Tell me, uh, was that before or after our little glamorous triumph? During. <laughs> darling, you have the habits of an alicat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a beautiful blue Persian one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm worried about Doc. His cheating gets clumsier and clumsier, and he drinks too much. Incidentally, that's a very handsome jacket you've got on. Oh, thank you, madame. Thank you very much. And aren't those new loafers? Yes, madame. Gucci. Uh, tell me, Rashi, how do you manage all this on the money I give you? I steal. Oh, is it? Are we expecting anyone? It appears to be your son's car at the front gate, madame. Lawrence? Well, what's he doing here? Oh, my God. I forgot I invited the whole family for my birthday. <gasps> Welcome, children. Welcome to Twelve Oaks. God's sake. Mother, will you please turn off that stupid dog tape and let us in? Three more people, and nothing is prepared. Well, make some microwave magic from the freezer. Oh, and Rashi, not a word about me forgetting my birthday. No, no. Just tell him I'm dressing for dinner and uh, stash a few of those bottles there. Why is always me who has to be the soul of discretion? What happened here? And Rashi, what is this? Oh, this. These scorch marks. We are not allowed to discuss it. Rashi, I want to know exactly what happened. There was never any true danger. Madam had me install a smoke alarm system, so I designed a photoelectric cell with solid state microchips. How come it didn't work? As Rabindranath Tagore once pointed out, nothing is enough for a man for whom enough is too little. Say that again. In Rajapur, we have a saying it is not the receiving. It is the giving of the receiving. That is the giving. Sorry I asked. Larry, now we've really got to do something about Anne. One more late, late show, a double brandy, a cigar, there goes the whole ball game. Just don't start on again about that Florida booby hatch. You can call it anything you want. She's got to be protected from herself. Oh, you know what she's like. She won't give up without one hell of a fight. Why don't we have it out right now before it's too late? <laughs> I was wondering whose car it was. <laughs> you mean she wasn't expecting us? Oh, of course she was. It was just to slip my memory. She forgot. Well, and forgot she asked us up here for her birthday. We're talking about senile dementia. Dot, how old is Anne, really? Either 50, 60 or 70, depending on her mood. And by the way, Anne suffers from a slight hardening of the arteries. Hardly senile dementia. Thank you, children.
Thank you for coming. <laughs> oh, from me, dearest Tom, the returns, my love. <laughs> and from my own greenhouse. <laughs> well, I did bring you a magnum of Dom Perignon, but I uh, drank it on the plane. <laughs> this is for you. Oh. A hookah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. I've always wanted to smoke one of these. Well, where's the hash? <laughs> For your next birthday. Uh -huh. uh, no, it doesn't look like much, but uh, they do say that good things come in small packages. Oh, well, I've always liked expensive things and big packages. <laughs> <laughs> the big packages I love. Oh, of course, dear. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Oh, Shalimar. I used to wear it all the time. <laughs> Mother, you'll love this. It's mm. the first edition. Mm. Oh, the Canary murder case by Van Dyne. Oh, that's wonderful, Larry. <laughs> oh, I always thought Willard was a bit of a stuffed chirp, but he did write the most marvelous plots. Thoroughly researched, like mine. Right, Rashi? Absolutely, madame. <laughs> Thank you. Annie? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Oh, well, Happy birthday. birthday. Lots of fuss and bother and presents and caviar, champagne. <laughs> Everybody making a fuss. <laughs> oh, your father used to love him, didn't you, Bill? Oh, boy, remember. Well, remember when we got hitched? Between us, we made a swift 80 bucks a week. Mm, remember, Bill? Remember the... Remember the studio room with the Murphy bed? Oh, we had fun. <laughs> oh, God damn it, we made whoopee. <laughs> I can't give you anything but love, baby. Andy. See what I mean? He's getting out of hand. Mother. Mother. Mother, mm -hmm. hadn't you better lie down? Mm -hmm. Hadn't you better lie down? Oh. Oh, yeah. Where, 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 where was it? Nothing. Everything's all right, oh, darling. I'm so it's perfect. sorry, darling. I'm so sorry. Nonsense. Now, what's this I'm told about you trying to set fire to the house again? Oh, whoever told you anything so ridiculous? <laughs> now, we had a little chat with Chief Burghardt down at the firehouse. Oh, fire's a private goddammit blabber now. You're going to destroy Twelve Oaks and everything in it. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Sheila. I love this place. I bought it with my first bestseller. We're only trying to protect you. I don't need your protection. These books are my protection, all 68 of them, translated into every civilized language in the world, second only to the immortal Agatha, who, if you ask me, was a bit of a fraud. I mean, you could drive trucks through some of her plots. And here am I, everything I've ever done in my career, totally dismissed by my so-called nearest and dearest. Well, you've made your point. Get out the straitjacket, wrap me in the icy sheets before I get violent. Nobody said that. Nobody said anything like that. And if I want to burn down my own house, who has a greater right? That's the free enterprise system. What is this place? Russia. Baby. I didn't know you were coming. Honey. You never called me. I called you Wednesday and told you we were coming up for Anne's birthday. You did? Uh-huh. I guess I forgot. Happy birthday, Granny Anne. I painted it just for you. What a beautiful package. It's a shame to spoil it. Oh, to my beautiful grandma, who I love the most. XXX. X, X. That means kisses. I know, darling. <laughs> oh, it doesn't look exciting. Oh, isn't that perfect? Tony, take down that tired old brack and put up an original by Pamela Harrison. Dinner. Such as it is, is served. What a warm, wonderful feeling to be surrounded by my loved ones on my 50th birthday.
indulge in a little witty conversation. Otherwise, something tells me we're in for rather a tense weekend. <laughs> Tony, I really admire you. Mm. You've made yourself charmingly indispensable to the tune of six million dollars. Well, it's my share six now. Uh, may I remind you that we're here to celebrate Mother's birthday? Tony's celebrating. He stuck it out to the bitter end, and whatever he collects, he will have earned. Oh, thank you, Sheila. On the other hand, you will come into your share painlessly through a marriage made in heaven. Not that painlessness inevitably follows. Oh, please, please, that, that, that's enough. Now, I, I want you two to stop this right now. Someone in this family's got to speak up. How do we know what drugs the good doctor's been feeding your poor old mother? Uh, do I detect a touch of homicide? I'll tell you this. If we can prove undue influence, you won't see a nickel of Anne Royce McLean's estate. Well, that takes care of the witty conversation. Up to your usual standards, Sheila. Sheila. Why do you always have to put in the needle? Larry, when are you going to face the facts? We've got to put her away. Where she can't commit involuntary immolation. Where she'll be protected from herself. What's immolation? Pam, darling. We were just... Planning a wonderful surprise for Granny Anne. A surprise? We found this lovely place in Florida where they will look after her every second. Where she can write her books and watch her precious Late Late Show and be waited on hand and foot. But it has to be a surprise, Pamela, so not a word, huh? Cross your heart and hope to die. Come on, we're gonna be late. What's the matter, honey? You look a little tired. I'm not tired. I think you ought to skip the concert and go to bed early. But I like the concert. You wouldn't like this one. I don't count on me going up. I've got work to do. Oh. The magazine goes to bed on Wednesday. Oh, well, Sheila. Looks like you're stuck with me. I'll get my bag. One second. What kind of a birthday is this? We haven't opened the presents. Oh, the children already gave you their presents. Oh, not your presents, my presents. I always think of these ghastly geriatric birthdays the survivor should give rather than receive. <laughs> Picasso gave me this himself. Pablo adored me. Pablo? Well, yes. Oh, of course. Uh, never amounted to anything. Sort of a two-night stand. What is that thing? Oh, darn it, I've forgotten it. Huh? Twenty-six, eighty-one, sixty-four. That's right. Twenty-six. Oh, what did I say? Eighty-one, sixty-four. Oh, <clears throat> eighty-one. 64. Yep. There we go. <laughs> Pamela, these are your mother's bracelets. You used to love to play with them when you were a little girl. I remember. <laughs> I still miss it very much. So do I, darling. <laughs> but you're not going away, are you, Granny Ann? Well, of course not. Whatever gave you that idea? Nothing. Mark, yes. here are my dear Bill's opal and ruby dress studs. Rescued, I can't recall how many times from the hawk shop. <laughs> if things don't pick up in Repro Antiques, they may soon be back there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anne. That's very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Doc. Oh, my God. Bill's stick bin for you, Doc. Oh, That's oh. a real pearl. Oh, <laughs> the perfect present mm -hmm. for the man who has nothing. Sheila, you've always loved this. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't. Oh. It's entirely too extravagant. Oh, nonsense. I'm sure you're some kind of a tax write-off. Oh, he's adored it. Isn't it beautiful? Larry, here's your father's Patek Philippe. 
Thank you, Mother. Well, I think that just about wipes out your father's estate, unless you could use a, a silver hip flask and a pair of dove gray spats. Mark, it's getting late. See you later, baby. There we go. Ciao. Granny, do you like surprises? Well, at my age, I could use a few. talk to you privately. Oh, well, if you'll excuse oh, me. Oh, no, I'll Tony, better. darling, I want you to stay. We'll discuss it in the morning, Larry. Well, I think it's important. I said in the morning. I'm sorry to ring you in on this, Doc, but I need your advice. Would you be kind enough to close those French doors? Oh. What on earth can this be? Oh. So much mysterious, oh, my dear. Oh, you'll you know like... if it works. I got him. Mark? Yeah? Where were you yesterday? I waited at our place room for two hours. Sheila. I do have to earn a living. I was out on the island trying to sell a $10,000 Sheraton sideboard. I understand they've installed telephones in Long Island now. I just told you I was busy. Who is? One of your jailbait lolitas. Knock it off. You know, I think you're moving entirely too fast with Larry. Oh, him, you know, we can't put the old drunk away. That's me. Once we have her committed, I know we can handle the rest of it. Like what? Like getting that pain in the ass doctor out of the will. That's me. Then it's the all we have to do is to put Pam away. Oh, God. that monster. There's a touch of Lady Macbeth in you. No <laughs> more touch. Get there. I'll stop it, Mark. Mm, come on now, not when I'm driving. Any ideas? I like it. Damn it, it went out of range. That's better. Oh. In 68 books, five plays, and 15 movies, I have never once stooped to the use of the vernacular, but I can say it now. Sheila is a shit. But darling, how on earth did you... You remember that touching little scene when I pinned the brooch on Sheila? It was a directional microphone with a, an effective radius of five miles. But how on earth did you suspect? Why? What made you... This is the fourth time that Mark has gallantly offered to take Sheila to the concert. After the last concert, I checked, and the Beethoven came out at 10.46. A little bell went off in my head. It only takes 45 minutes to get back here. They didn't get back till after 1 a.m. You know, it's 27.6 miles from here to Tanglewood, and I had Rashi check their speedometer the next morning, and instead of 55.2, it was 74.8 on the nose. It's obvious. To you, Sam Spade, and Sherlock Holmes, perhaps, not me. Granny? Yes, dear? What's a jailbait, Lolita? What was that, sweetheart? Jailbait Lolita. I heard Sheila tell it to Mark just now. Well, uh, well, well, what else did you hear, darling? Nothing. I was reading. Well, uh, have some nice hot cocoa in a hot bath and get to bed, dear. Night, Granny. Good night, darling. Damn it. I left the playhouse switch open. Oh, not to worry. She clearly didn't understand anything. Oh, you can't be too sure. <laughs> I can't always tell what Pammy understands and what she doesn't. Oh, no, no, man, now, don't darling. Don't try to stop don't me, know. dear. I need this. I'll get rid of them, both of them. That's a pretty cold order, darling. I protected that phony furniture salesman for Pammy's sake, but I'm through. That 12-cylinder louse has got to go. And Lady Macbeth? Oh, oh, wait until I get through with her. <laughs> and careful. They do have rather a good case. What? Well, look at the record. If you went such a wizard shop with that seltzer bottle, the best place to be a charred ruin. Ah, how 
How could I have ever slept with a man as cold-blooded and logical? Darling, you want the facts, don't you? Well, listen, I could drop dead at any second, and where would that leave my Pamela? And you're not dropping dead, and if you're worried about being put away, there's a very simple solution. Sell this place and give the pictures to the Museum of Modern Art. That'll kill Lady Macbeth. Now, where does that leave you, Doc? Me? Well, uh, I've always got my stick pin with a real bow. And what am I supposed to do? Uh, sweetheart, sell one Picasso and go and buy a co-op at the Hotel Pierre. The Pierre? Yes, Pierre. Well, it's a very nice place, and you could you could have a female companion, any oh, companion. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not dumping me in any three-room million-dollar slum. Morning, sweetheart. What's the good of trying to talk reason to you? None at all. And if push comes to shove, I expect you to get on that witness stand and lie your precise grammatical British head off. How? <laughs> About how you never saw me take a drink, I don't smoke, and I never set a fire in my life. What happens in seven years when I get out? Doc, if you don't mind, I'd like a little time alone. Yes, all right. Now, take those pills you have for good and just take that down. And not another brandy and no more television. All right? Okay. I promise. Annie, am I really such a pain in the ass? An adorable pain in the ass. You always say the right thing. I've been, uh, I've been thinking about what you said yesterday about Mother. You have? Now, we, uh, we mustn't move too fast, but I, but I think I can convince her to sell this place. Now, Larry, don't force me to do something I don't want to do. Force you to do what? Well, in case it slipped your mind, darling, the check. The one with my name on it. The one I never wrote. The one you wrote to cover your magazine losses. Yeah, you know, I'll pay it back. Every quarter. Well, of course I know that, but... Will the jury... <clears throat> will be departing soon. Rashi, have you been eavesdropping? There's no need. Rashi knows everything. And there's another one that's got to go. In Rajapur, we have a saying. It is written in fire that those who conspire are the first to expire. <laughs> Dark. Careful, honey. Why don't you trot along after her? Hmm? Very funny. Hi. Bye. Why do you only kiss me when there are other people around? Take care, honey. Well, I say goodbye. I'll walk too. Cheers. Bye bye. disappeared. I had a rotten headache. Doc is absolutely right. I simply must cut down. Larry, be a darling and pour me a short one. Where is Doc? 
He decided to walk to the village. Oh. I'll go too. I need the exercise. Mind if I join you? No. Hey, what is this? Anyone would think you were afraid to drive in my rules. No. It's always a thrilling ride home in the back of the tow truck. <laughs> See you. Sheila, you come with me. All right, Mother. I want your opinion of something. I think this will interest you. Knock it off. You know, I think you're moving entirely too fast with Larry. Hush, you know, we can't put the old drunk away. Once we have her committed, I know we can handle the rest of it. Like what? Like getting that pain what in the ass out of the world. It gets better. Then it's a cinch. All we have to do is to put Pam away. You know, darling? I know what's going through your mind. How did the old drunk do it? Well, actually, it was quite simple. It's amazing what they can do these days, isn't it? It's a mini microphone. I used one in the deadly voice. 654,000 hardcover, 975,000 paperback. And I thought you were just a senile old lady. Every now and then, I have a streak of sanity. Now, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You're going to divorce Larry, or he'll divorce you. Either way, I want you out of this family. Not a chance. And out of the kindness and generosity for which I'm famous, I'm willing to offer you a settlement of $100,000 to get your miserable bones out of here. <laughs> A hundred thousand dollars for living with Larry all these years. I'm so sorry, Grandma, but you are going to have to raise the ante. No haggling, no bargaining. Take it or leave it. And after you're gone, our share of the estate will be at least six million. I'll take my three million now. How would you like it in fives or tens? <laughs> Now, this will be in my safe deposit at the Chase Manhattan tomorrow morning. Well, you're bluffing. Try me. You are a firebug and a loony. There'll be no trouble putting you away. And that is just what I am going to do. You can count on it. Bill. Bill! Help me, Bill. You heard her. You know what a bitch she is. You know what she's gonna do. You know what's gonna happen to my little girl. Yeah, you're right, Bill. I'm gonna have to finish her off.
poor Miss Sheila. So young, so lovely. In Rajapur, we have a saying, we are but a passing shadow on the face of time. Well, this passing shadow would like a drink. Yes, madam. You know, madam, I'm not merely your servant, but also your devoted friend, eternally grateful for rescuing poor Rashi from the abyss of penal servitude. Get to the point, Rashi. You know my discretion. You know my loyalty. Rashi. Why did you do it? Do what? Extinguish Miss Sheila. Are you out of your mind? But surely, Madam's remembrance must acknowledge the fact that it was I who devised this whole nefarious plan. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You know I'm a helpless cripple in a wheelchair. No problem then. Madam can compose a nice suicide note. A suicide note? Yes. And I can forge Miss Sheila's handwriting and also her signature. Get me another drink. Sorry I spoke. Yes, sir. Were you here when Miss Sheila came back? No, sir. I saw you leave the theater before intermission. Yes, sir. I believe I did. Y you see, sir, operetta is not my cup of tea. In Rajapur, we have a saying, if the music soothed the savage beast, why has not the tiger a victrola? You're a liar, Rashi, no matter what they say in Rajapur. You knew damn well the minute Madame was committed, you were going right back to jail. You will take your hands off from my person. May I remind you, I have homicidal tendencies. Fine. Have it your way for now. Get me some ice. Yes, sir. Very well, sir. I'm so sorry. I'm so terribly sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. There'll uh, have to be an inquest, I'm afraid. Inquest? Why? What for? Well, it's statutory after any kind of accidental death or other unusual circumstance. Was she under sedation of any kind or drug? No. Well, I don't think so. You're quite sure. Well, no. Let me look. What's this? Well, obviously a cassette. What else? 
Well, she Sheila never used the tape recorder. Let's hear what it is. Uh, no, I'm awfully sorry. I'm, I'm afraid nothing must be touched until after the investigation. That's right, Larry. The doc's absolutely right. What investigation? Uh, it was I'm, an accident. I'm sorry, dear, but the law is the law. Mother, give me back the tape. Tell me, sweetheart. Come on. I won't go talk. I'm so frightened. But what is it, baby? Tell me. Last night, Sheila, it was awful. Well, what were you looking for just now? Did Mark send you? No. I mean, I don't know. How did you get that? I fell off my bike. Darling, he will never do that to you again. I promise. Rashi, when you go into the village, stop at Joe's. We're running a little low on the Hennessy. You might pick up a case of Beaujolais. I want a half a dozen Perrier. And... May I assist you, Doctor? Uh, yes, please, Rashi. Tell me, why was uh, Madame so late at the theater last night? Late, sir? Yes, you know damn well she was late. Oh, you beat last night? Yes. Well, sir, we were halfway through to the theater when Madame realized that she has forgotten her tickets. So we returned. And, of course, you ran in and got them for her. No, sir. Madame did. An infirm old lady in a wheelchair? Why didn't you come yourself? Good question, sir. A very good question. An extremely good question. And I expect an extremely good answer. With all due respect, doctor, may I know the purport of this interrogation? Yes, the purport is to find out how Miss Sheila died. I'm resenting your influence, doctor. What would I have to do with Miss Sheila's death? You knew perfectly well the moment Miss Sheila took over. Your future expectations would be extremely limited. If we are looking for motives, Doctor, you have six million dollars worth of them. Yes? Yeah. With all due respect, again, if you are accusing me of murder, you are showing an amazing amount of chutzpah. Excuse me, sir. Madame Anne Royce McLean's residence. Who oh, is it? Would you please hang on a minute, sir? I'm Mr. Charles Ferguson from District Attorney's Office in Lennox. Hello? Charlie Ferguson? <laughs> I remember you from the checkout counter in Safeways. So you made the bar. Good for you, Charlie. Yes, I, I understand. I know it's customary, and the whole family will be here. Well, 10 a.m. will be fine. Right? Bye, Charlie. Well, how about that? Little Charlie Checkout is the D.A. And I sincerely hope you'll have a good story for him tomorrow. What are you talking about? Oh, you can't have forgotten. Sheila's death is an exact replay of your new book. Don't you remember reading me the last chapter? I did? Well, yes, darling. The, the Colonel's car in the garage, the, the ignition that wouldn't turn off, the door coming down and suffocating him, the same thing exactly. 
an amazing coincidence. Damn. Life is full of them. It's one thing to write about murder. It's quite another thing to commit it. All right, I'll, I'll make a confession. I would love to have liquidated Lady Macbeth. I even set a trap for her. But <laughs> I couldn't go through with it. Are you positive? I'm positive. I, I started for the theater, and then I changed my mind. I came back and turned the darn thing off and got back to the theater in time for the curtain. Of that, I'm positive, absolutely positive.